My name is Ellen Parr. I run a restaurant called Lucky and Joy in Clapton. I've always loved socialising and meal times. I'm an only child and I think I definitely like craved opportunity to be social and hang out with people. And then cross with that, food has always been a huge passion for me. So if I mix those two things together, it made sense to become a chef. My first proper job as a chef was at Moro. Cooks like Middle Eastern and Spanish and a bit of Turkish as well, which was my dream restaurant when I was younger because of all the way they cook on the fires and all the delicious breads and yogurts and grilled meats. And worked there for years and years and years. And then I started the Art of Dining while I was working there, which has pop-ups and events. Through that, I taught myself many different types of cuisines and got a real love for Chinese food and through eating in Silk Road in Camberwell. Silk Road is from Xinjiang, so you kind of see a bit more of the Uyghur influence in the food. And it's my like, totally favourite thing, is spicy, smoky meat and fish. So I was amazed trying these flavours of the thing that I love to cook the most in another exciting cuisine. And I just wanted to find out more about all these types of food. Then me and my best friend Pete, who I now run the restaurant with, had a bit of a gap in our career, both of us, and we decided to go to America, to New York, because I always loved the way that you ate out in New York, it's, and it seems a lot more casual and fun, and it's just a great food scene there. So I went for three months and staged in multiple restaurants, and then a Michelin star Chinese restaurant as well, and just started thinking about the food scene in New York, um, the fact that there was a lot of places cooking like slightly more off the map Chinese food. We used to go to Flushing as well to, all the time, which is this, the Chinatown out in Queens, and you can find restaurants from every region. So we were very interested and excited after New York because we thought we could combine this fun, casual dining experience with this idea of doing regional Chinese inspired food. So then we came back from New York and decided to go on a trip to China to do some more research. We had a bit of an idea of a few places we really wanted to go to, which was Chengdu, Xi'an, uh, Qingjiang, which we went to a Rimchi, and then to Turpan, which is a desert town, and then Shanghai, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Macau. So we landed in Chengdu, and, we, and Pete was incredibly jet-lagged, and we just wandered around. <laughs> and couldn't believe it. It was absolutely amazing. Every single corner you go to, there's a different stool serving some particular dish that you're not really sure what it is, but you can kind of guess. Like there's so many street stalls selling these different amazing potatoes that are all like with paprika and salt and sugar. Just things like that, everything we walked past, we'd try. We ate about five or six meals a day and we'd always order too much in the restaurant so we were so full all the time. I had a little notebook and just write the things I could taste in it or see. Garlic, chilli, star anise, cinnamon, Szechuan pepper, cucumbers, limes, bird's eye chilies, lemongrass, soy, Shaoxing wine, cassia bark, bay leaves, cloves, red fermented tofu, rice vinegar, sugar. <laughs> the really exciting thing is that you hear about and see dishes that you've just never seen, I've, I've never seen before. And that's so exciting, having like these huge amount of new concepts that you can work on and change a little bit to suit your restaurant style. For example, the grandma's potatoes, which is just whopped mashed potato with pickles. I tried it first in a Yunnanese restaurant in Shanghai, and it was served in like a love heart shape. It was really sweet. It's called grandma's potatoes because it's for grandmas who have lost all their teeth to eat. But I just love it so much. Out of all the things in the restaurant, I could eat a bowl of it every day. It would probably never go off the menu. There's lots of things in Chinese cooking that are very, very skilled. And I knew that before I went, but it definitely opened my eyes to it. When we were in Turpan, we stumbled upon this little cafe. There was a group of young women and they were pulling these noodles. We turned these huge wadges of dough into the thinnest, most delicious noodles in five minutes. Learning that kind of skill takes so much dedication and hard work. I'm just humbled by it.
it's an incredibly complicated and diverse food culture in China. I feel like I've barely scratched the surface and I'm excited to discover more. I don't think you could ever go enough times the amount you could learn from travelling and eating and these journeys. And it's kind of ended up inspiring me to open a restaurant, which is about as meaningful as it can be, really. Like, it's changed my life. So, yeah, just trying to educate ourselves and educate other people on this amazing cuisine and make our little twist on it. It's like you fill on salty, spicy, acidic food that I love and I will always sort out between their food cuisine. It's exciting.